Alexis Richie is back at it again with another retrospective review. And if you've been following the last episode, you would know that I've been looking at Tupac's canon of movie films. So first off, we looked at Juice. Uh, which is a really really big uh, prominent role for the gangster slash hood films in the 90s and then we followed that with Bullet that came out in 996 you know Tupac starring with his good friend Mickey Rourke and now on this one we looked at one that again came out after his death which was gang related starring Jim Belushi and Tupac Chikoy in the lead roles you know so before we dive into this video be sure to like comment share and subscribe definitely check me out on social media but with that being said ladies and gentlemen let's get on to this video so gang related it tells the story of these two corrupted cops who on one faithful night uh, they take out a wrong uh, person yeah, so uh, Tupac Shakur and James Belushi's characters, Frank Da Vinci and Jake Rodriguez, uh, they actually set up uh, this, uh, which they didn't know, a cop in a drug trafficking deal. Uh, and this pretty much leads on to a whole, uh, whole part of the pretty much main story is, you know, they're trying to blame the death of this DEA agent onto a gang related crime. They believe that at this time it must have been the gangs that were involved uh for this particular incident with the dea just so happens that uh dennis quaid falls in and they want to blame him on this and uh yeah you know you also have appearances for layla rashawn james o jones you also have david Pima, gary cole and kumo d is the one who's playing uh who's who wants to plays uh hard who gets shot in the beginning of the film um at this time for uh tupac shakur um, again, he really had a, a, a really gone through the evolution phase super quickly, and it's still hard to believe that we lost, um, you know, a very impactful someone who changed the game into Park Chico at such an early age of 25. Yeah, and it's really incredible to look at how much he grew from Juice into this position so at this time Tupac Shakur um again the movie was they were actually filming it and uh, actually just like a month just prior to his actual uh death so they finished filming uh this movie um Tupac was actually fatally shot in that uh if you've seen iconic pictures at Las Vegas he co-stars with James slash Jim Belushi who comedian comedian who had his bigger break that came from Saturday Night Live comedy skit, uh, sketch comedy show. I was always introduced to James and just uh, Jim Belushi from his two, so you could say two movies he starred with, which was uh, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, which the first one was Red Heat, and then he appeared with him in Jingle All the Way that came out a year prior to this in 996, where Jim Belushi does appear, you know, in a really cool cameo in there. And I think these two really work together. Um, good different uh role from Tupac what he's done before because Tupac uh before was pretty much a gangster in the cop but he does feel less menacing in this movie from his previous entries alongside the two leading men you have uh Leila Roshan who was that super uber uber beautiful uh ebony uh black Nubian queen who appeared in uh, Boomerang uh she appeared in Wayne Tech's Hail and she also appeared in a uh, role in the first season of the Wayne Brothers in uh, Wayne's Brothers. And then Rashawn basically plays a stripper who is romantically involved with Jim Belushi's character. She's basically uh, she with the three of them. They're basically like involved in this whole drug trafficking ordeal. And how it kind of works is that from like um, the error that Rodriguez and also Rodriguez and Frank make. Uh, in the beginning, you know, killing like Tomo D, she gets involved in this because she knows who actually did, like what actually went down because she was present there. So when uh, the detectives, uh, Tupac and Jens Belushi's character, uh, you know, they return back to the police, uh, you know, station, the police headquarters, and they basically use the cocaine, uh, the drugs that they got from HUD, uh, Kumo D's character, they put that in the evidence room, you know, to say like, oh, it was gang related, but they're gonna just put that there, you know, to say like, uh, you know, to agree with their corrupted story. It's then when uh, Bing's character, uh, 
Gary Cole, who is a DEA uh, agent playing Richard Sims, he was good friends with agent, DEA agent Lionel Hart of Kumo D's character. So this really pisses him off insanely because he really knew uh he really knew kumo d's character you know you know more of a personal level than a professional level you know they were good friends you know so the DA agent isn't gonna let this slide you know and it's from that moment is when like uh rodriguez and also uh frank frank da vinci um they both find they find out that man the one they did this like kind of drug uh trafficking this drug like scheme was actually a dea agent you know so they spend most of the film trying to frame someone else so you'll see scenes where they're you know just like uh arresting you know random thugs like off the street you know just to like you know kind of put them in in this thing and to say like oh it was gang related you know it wasn't these cops because it feels like and you can see the panic and the emotions on the two detectives that it's gonna catch up to them it's gonna bust them in the ass and that's when it comes to where dennis quaid shows up you know dennis quaid who's playing this uh you know bomb this homeless uh you know worthless dude who's just on the street who actually lives uh, who actually stays close to leila restaurant's uh character when she's outside they come up with the grand scheme to frame him that he was there who took out uh who took out um, Lionel Hart. In the midst of all this, it's established that uh, Tupac uh, Rodriguez, uh, he has a big uh, gambling debt, you know, because like both of these characters, they're corrupted, but they're looking for like a way out. Uh, Frank is like telling uh, Rodriguez that, you know, we got a trip to Hawaii, you know, we're gonna like leave this whole cop business and just get out. So, but before that, like he was always doing like just bad gambling debts. So there is, uh, you know, scene early on with all of this going on that they come to uh, in Tupac's apartment. It's like really short, petite, uh, little midget dude. You know, he comes to Tupac demanding his money, and just beside him, you got the tiny Lister uh, Debo, who got very famous from the Friday Debo. He's there as the security to make sure that. You know, Rodriguez pays this money back. They actually are able to finally frame William McCall, who's Dennis Quay's character. He was the bum that was hanging out in front of Layla Rashawn's apartment. Once they actually frame him and they have this like, okay, the idea that they're gonna put him, they actually get Cynthia Webb, uh, Layla Rashawn's to go and she say like, okay, you know, he's the one that's doing it as a witness, you know, so they wanted her to, you know, basically say like, oh, she was there in the crime and he was the one who did it. It's like around this time, it's when Cynthia Webb, Layla Rashawn, she really sees how kind of really crooked uh, both of them are, you know, especially uh, Frank, James Belushi, you know, because um, he was cheating. They had a relationship while he was still married with his wife. Once he actually, once uh, Cynthia Webb actually pulls out uh, William, coincidentally happens that he happens to be a very, uh, you know, very, very big physician in the medical field and it comes from a wealthy family. So once he's actually behind bars and he's going down for murder, he's able to get the best lawyers available. One of them just so happens to be the great legendary James Earl Jones. With the help of James Earl Jones, who's playing uh, Arthur Byler, you know, who really guaranteed that he was going to get uh, Dennis Quaid, Williams' character, you know, out of prison, and you know successfully he's able to do so just because he was just so hard hitting with his questions you know it's like if he was if there was like a for someone uh, who wants to like learn what a good lawyer is you can see he was on point in this you know so because of that um they actually put cynthia webb like on the stand and she testifies you know lying like on the stand the whole case falls apart so from there, it's like uh, like Rodriguez. Um, uh, there's this scene where they both like uh, drive in uh, late at night, you know, just figuring out what to do. But it just so happens Rodriguez to talk, he just happens to have a wire. And uh, James um, uh, Frank, he actually like he gets whiff of this early on because he's like, why is like you know Tupac uh, Rodriguez is asking so much questions? You know, he's talkative, but he's never like this and out of nowhere he just like pulls him on gunpoint and tells him to get out of the car um they exchange a few like you know um you know unpleasantries you know frank saying like i'm gonna kill you 
then when they actually go back in the car he actually hits him and he finds that he actually was gonna have a wire he actually had a wire you know so from there the friendship dissolves and like uh frank he just basically goes into like hiding now because like you know they actually got down tape and like after this like when rodriguez gets back to his apartment uh, and he's so like emotionally wrecked you know like um he did basically you know the right thing but it's like it cost him his friendship you know it cost him his bro with like frankie frank and just so happens that the the short dude his name's vic um the, the bookie dude um he's back uh with people tony lister who's called like the Kada supreme and Dupac just with like nothing to lose you know he just runs into them and he, he gets like shot you know next morning the detectives come just come gary cole uh the de agent comes in to examine uh you know tupac's like uh, body but he still wants to catch uh frankie because now they have the tape of the confession of these uh of their act of killing uh richard simmons close friend uh, now because they have that tape uh the recording of uh frank's confession james o'donnell who again was representing william and his quiz character he's now representing cynthia webb and then he basically gives him the the proof like um if you're able to speak i can offer you protection you know because like uh, we need to get this motherfucker scumbag now and uh, Cynthia was one Cynthia Webb she actually is able to uh, basically able to talk to uh, James Earl Jones offer and tell him that like okay this is what he did this was the crimes as uh, basically tell her the truth from the betrayal of Cynthia Webb uh, Frankie is actually hiding in uh, her apartment so one night when she's returning from her stripping gig she meets him you know he's alone you know you can see his his beard's grown his hair's grown longer he's basically on the run um you know like wanted dead or alive you know that's dude so he tells her like you know you betrayed me we had a plan we we're gonna work stuff out and enraged you know from like because i'm pretty sure he knows that rodriguez gone he puts uh cynthia webb you know the beautiful simple way on the bed puts a pillow over fridge and shoots her but just luckily Cynthia where Leila Rashawn's character is able to survive. Kyle Barker, TC Carson from Living Single, um, he appears in here just, you know, short to the end, you know, and he actually kind of assists, you know, Frank with, um, you know, just like his, you know, plans. You know, he wanted a car. He got that. He wanted him to sell some dope to get some money. He was able to do that. Um, so once like he's actually once Frank's actually shot her and he actually arranged with like uh, T C Carson, I was gonna call him Kyle, but he is he organized with T C Carson's uh, Terrence Carson's character um, Manny to get him like a, basically like a vehicle, basically like to get him like out of the city. But it just so happens that like he gets into the wrong vehicle and the one of the dudes that they were trying to frame before you know so when at the time when they exchanged the guns early in the evidence room they actually did it with this guy serial uh, killer who was on trial so he remembered that and especially when he was probably aware of this uh of the confession made on the recording you know he actually uh, commandeers the vehicle and he shoots frankie you know point blank and dumps the vehicle you know and he just rises to the sunset and that's pretty much the end of gang related the soundtrack you know so the soundtrack was actually produced through death row records so in this album you got a whole heap of outstanding talent in this soundtrack you know so you got um so you got like a whole you got like production was done by quincy jones and you've got artists featuring max j flex the realist the dog town Outlaws, the West Side Connection, and Tupac Shakur makes a cool few um, uh, rap albums in this. And to be honest, the music, as I mentioned, like um, especially with Juice, I think this soundtrack definitely triumphs the one uh, from Bullet. Um, it really suits for this gritty, uh, gritty crime, you know, drama of like corrupted cops. So the music is really, really. Um, except for the time and the music is put in in the right parts you know there's one tune that i always love 
um, this is more of the score than the soundtrack, you know, it's like, dun, 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 dun. so it's one score when you always see like Rodriguez and Frank, you know, like talking about their problems, you know, um, that like musical score is always amazing, but the soundtrack I highly recommend. All right. So final four song gang related, uh, two films that came out, um, this year in 1997, you had, uh, Gridlock and gang related which came out in 1997 and those films that were released after tupac was gone so it's really hard you know because it's really hard sometimes when you look at it because um tupac without question you know was uh, a solid actor and um, it is a shame to when you do see his performances like how he really captures the screen and what i love so much about him is like in all of the movies he's there he was a headlining act it's really cool seeing tupac as a performance on this film for me personally i've always enjoyed watching gang related um i actually prefer this better than bullet i always felt gang related um it had that kind of body cop thing even though they were corrupted but it had that more which i liked more than actually bullet i would say as well i think definitely which helps this film is definitely the supporting cast you know leila rashawn beautiful was beautiful leila rashawn <laughs> as cynthia webb she does fantastic in this i really love dennis quaid scenes because when you see dennis quaid playing william you see a big transformation of how he's this bomb um he's this worthless hobo and then you see him transform to he gets a shave and he gets his confidence back you know which is a real cool um you know just kind of cool like a, a progression to when you're introduced him before the great james old jones you know he brings a very spectacular performance and i definitely like seeing like david um uh, gary cole uh you know and also david uh Paymer. even the um you know small cameo appearances from tiny lister jr and also you got kumo d you know thing so it's, it just has like a, a very good um supporting cast uh which when you go back you're going to realize like oh you know he was in this or she was in this you know so i i really enjoyed the the cast yes i would have to give gang related at least like a three stars out of five um, um gang related is some is a film that i could definitely go back and watch um, this only one shot out of revenge what's really cool with gang related is that you're introduced from the beginning you kind of don't really know what's happened until really like the kind of like the just after like maybe 15 minutes 20 minutes into the picture that these cops are corrupted and they keep on making mistakes and bumbling over you know um just trying to take shortcuts you know because that's what really tupac and especially james bellucci you know playing frank tried to do and it just shows what um something that is a real topic of like corrupted cops who work as detectives um do do stuff to plant evidence and try to get away with murder and that you know so i really enjoyed this kind of story you know it, it just felt more based in reality than bullet and it's like i really just appreciate that um and just the way i think they i think it's not the best chemistry that the two leads had in tupac and james belushi but i think it was a great uh co-op great team in that uh, position and i feel it's directed well you know by the director it doesn't feel too long and i just feel like everyone played their part but i think three out of five stars is a good uh it's the right score for this movie yeah guys that's my review on gang related that came out in 1997 really appreciate you for what taking time to watch this video um let me know your thoughts on you know gang related if you've seen it you know how does it compare to um you know the other previous entries of tupac's films you know where does that rank up let me know what you felt about tupac in this performance you know this was pretty much the last theatrical uh you could say pretty much movie that was released uh you know for tupac and i think the only other one was gridlock which i'm going to be reviewing next you know so all that put down in the comment section and yeah you know we'll see you Thank on you the next money. one i don't know how i'm gonna pay him back i got problems Gamble. yeah